The thing was cigar-shaped and blue-grey in colour. Suddenly it vanished, seeming to turn on its axis and shoot off into the distance. Here's that sequence again, slowed down. If we look at the disappearing act frame by frame, we can see that the actual disappearance is completed in the course of only three frames. Assuming the object to be about 40 feet long, as the faint appearance of portholes along the sides suggest, it must have accelerated away at a speed of something like 5,000 miles an hour, seven times the speed of sound in only one sixteenth of a second. This is a British United Airways Dart Herald. The registration number, Golf Alpha Papa Whiskey India, shows it to be the very plane Mrs. Oldfield flew in. Notice the tail plane. It was this that suggested the flight might prove worthwhile. Our cameraman sat in the same seat as Mrs. Oldfield had. Through the window, notice how the view is distorted at the edges. The glass is slightly convex where it meets the frame. Taxiing out now for the takeoff. A 16mm camera is unwieldy, and for hunting UFOs, perhaps less effective than the amateur's 8mm. Nevertheless, watch very carefully. Here it comes. Tomorrow's world's very own UFO. This is how Mrs. Oldfield described her experience. I looked out of the window and saw what I thought to be some kind of large aircraft cutting obliquely across the back of our aircraft. It was smooth, but not shiny or glittering. It was clearly defined. What we are seeing now is, in fact, a direct view of the tail plane of the aircraft, seen at an acute angle to the window glass. At the edge of the windows, the angle of the glass changes, breaking the image and making it seem to float disembodied in space. Those portholes on the UFO are, in fact, flaking paint on the leading edge of the tail plane. A slight change of camera angle makes the UFO disappear or reappear. In fact, once you have the knack, you can spot UFOs in the most unlikely places. And it wasn't even April the 1st when our film was shot.